Hey guys, welcome to the next tutorial. Um, so in this tutorial, we're actually going to add to our animation systems. We're actually going to be able to tell whether we're sprinting or not, um, and basically play a different animation if we are. Um, and if we have time, I will also have a look at getting our jumping animations in. So we have an animation when we leave the ground and an animation when we land. Okay, so the first thing we want to set up is our actual transitions between our walking animations and our sprinting animations. Uh, so I'm going to go onto our weapon um, and go into the child that we created called Weapon Animations. And I'm just going to go to Window and Animation and uh, Animator. So this will open up the Animator window um, for the controller that we created in the last episode or the episode before. I can't really remember. <laughs> it's been a bit too long. Um, and here you can see our first two clips. Um, if the clip isn't in here, you can just click and drag it uh, from where we created it. Um, but usually, because we create the controller first and then the animations, it assumed that we wanted to do it. So it's put it in here for us, which is quite nice. Um, so let's do a few things. We're going to go into parameters. We're going to add a few um, booleans in here. So the first boolean is going to be our is sprinting. Um, and then what we can also add, uh, actually let's just do the sprinting for now. Um, so between these two, uh, we're going to want it to transition to sprinting if this boolean is set to true, and we want it to transition back if this boolean is set to false. Um, so to do this, from our walking animation, we can just right click it and say make transition, and then click on sprinting, and then if you click on the transition you can set some conditions. Um, so our condition from walking to sprinting, we want the condition to be um, we want to check if our is sprinting is true, so it looks like that's already done. And because these are two looping animations, we don't want to have an exit time, we just want it to transition as soon as that condition is met. So I'm going to untick that little box, um, and then what we can do is make a transition from sprinting back to walking. And then if we click that transition, we just uh, add a condition if is sprinting is false. Um, and again, uncheck that little box. I'm going to click save, make sure that's saved, go back onto both of my animations and make sure that they are both looping, which they are. And now we should be able to, if we don't maximize on play, if I just hit play, and then I click on weapon animations in here, if I set this boolean to true, um, you'll see we actually play our sprinting animation. Cool. And then if I set it back to false, you'll see we play this animation. Alright, so um, let's go into our uh, weapon script, our weapon controller script. I'm just going to double click that to open it up. And then once we're inside, what we're going to do is we're going to set that boolean um, of our animator via our code here. So what I also want to do is clean this up a little as we're going to be adding a few different things in here. Um, so let's go ahead and create a private void for our weapon rotation. Um, and I'm going to stick with what we did on our character controller. So this is going to be calculate weapon rotation. There we go. Um, and for now, I'm just going to put all of the weapon rotation in there. Um, we can break it down a little bit more later on. Um, and then just make sure we pop that in the update here. Okay, so a few things we need to do is we need to set that is sprinting bool. Um, so it can be done quite easily. Um, and I'm actually going to create a private void for set weapon animations. And then we'll add that to the update as well. Inside set weapon animations. Um, so what we want to do is we want to do uh, what did we call that reference? Our animator, weapon animator, and then inside here dot set and bool. So you can probably see where this is going now. So we're going to set our is sprinting bool, and we're going to set it to our character. Oh, what happened there? Character controller dot is sprinting which I don't believe is a public so let's quickly go into our character controller um, and we'll 
quickly have a look for what our is printing here. So yeah, that is a private. So let's set that to a public um, and we'll just hide that in the inspector. And let's go back to our weapon controller and now we should be able to see it. It's sprinting. Cool. All right, so we'll save that. Let's go back into Unity and let's give it a give it a test. So in theory, it should be that easy. So if we are walking around, should just be able to sprint. Yep. And if I come out of sprint. Cool. All right, so nice and easy. Um, so let's um, let's go ahead and create our jumping and landing animations, and we'll see if we can get those in as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go click on weapon animations, make sure the scene view is up, let's make it a little bit bigger, um, and then I'm going to go window, animation, and animation. So let's create a few more clips. Um, so again, it's going to be done on our weapon animations. Um, so I'm just going to create a new clip. We'll put it in the same place as the others. Um, instead of calling it new animation, we are going to call this jump. Um, and very similar to the other animations, we're going to add a property. We'll add transform and our position and rotation. So we'll have our position and rotation. Um, and what we want the animation to do is initially we want it to go down a bit. So I'm going to hit record um, and I'm just going to move it down a teeny bit. And then what we want it to do from there is we kind of want it to go up as if it's falling. So just like this. So see this, uh, let's move that up a little, maybe put that here. So see, I want it to go down real quick to kind of mimic us jumping. Alright, so after playing around with it a little bit, I kind of wanted to make it so that the gun kind of goes off aim. That's kind of like a little penalty for jumping. Um, so it goes to the side a little, um, which I think is fair enough. I think Escape from Tarkov did um, something very similar and it worked quite nice. Um, so this is actually the end of our jump here, but then you can see I have it going a little bit further up and up. Um, so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to uh, create a little falling idle from this. Um, so if I hit play, see this is a nice little, that's going to be our initial jump trigger and this is going to have to fall into an idle. So what I'm firstly going to do is I'm going to copy this keyframe, I'm going to come out of record and we're just going to go ahead and create a new clip and we'll just call this falling idle. And I'm 100% sure I spelled that wrong. <laughs> yep, uh, we're going to go with it though. <laughs> so I'm going to add another property for position and um, add another property for rotation. Cool. Um, and then I'm just going to hit record and I'm going to... Let's lost my copy, so let's go back to our jump. Copy that keyframe, go back to Fallen Idol. Hopefully I can paste it. Yep, there we go. All right, so this is where our idle was. Uh, the, sorry, this is where our idle is going to be. Uh, so I'm going to delete the first keyframe and put our new keyframe. I'm going to copy it again, delete the last one, and I'm just going to come in here and paste that one. So now all we have is this. So let's just create a little idle. I'm just going to add a few rotations in here. Make sure you hit record before you start rotating things or moving things. There we go. So it's just a little idle animation to play while we're falling. Um, so the chances of the player seeing this is um, pretty nice, uh, pretty nice, pretty good. So make sure you have a nice little animation playing. All right. And then the last animation we need is a landing animation. Uh, so I'm going to just create a new clip here and I'm just going to call this landing. 
or actually I should probably just call it land, but I'm going to go back and edit the names anyway to fix my little spelling mistake. Okay, and I'm going to add again position and rotation, um, and hopefully the keyframe still copied from the last one, which it is. Okay, so the falling is going to be uh, the falling. The landing is going to be quite simple. Um, so let me just oh, let me just control Z that. Okay, so the first keyframe we want it to be the keyframe of where the idle is, uh, the falling idle, and the last keyframe we want it to be the default position of the gun. So nice and simple. Um, and then we can just add a little land in between here. So if I come to near the beginning, say around here, and just move that down. Okay, so I didn't hit record because I'm a numpty <laughs> and I always forget. Um, okay, so around, I'm just going to copy this, the yeah, last keyframe, and paste it in here. So what I want it to do is I want it to land and immediately go back. So I'll add a few of these keyframes. Say if I that a little bit lower. See, we land and then it comes back. All right, so now we have those animations in play. Um, what I'm actually going to do is I think uh, we'll, we'll do it in the next episode. Um, so I did want to apologize for me not uploading recently. Um, a lot of work came in and I kind of had to get it done. Um, but again, I think I'm back on schedule um, and I'm going to try to upload as many as I can. Um, so yeah, uh, stay tuned for the next uh, tutorial and uh, it'll be out soon and I'll catch you in the next one.